Given your experience, what do you think needs to happen before we see commercial trace space travel at a large scale? Well, I think uh, we're at the very beginnings of that. Um, at Axiom Space, we're building the first commercial space station, which is really remarkable because previously those sort of things could only be conceived of by governments and, and you know, big industry. And so we're uh, well on our way of building our first uh, commercial space station. And I'm curious, I mean, when we say commercial space travel, what is your timeline here? So we have some hurdles to get through, but what is your timeline for when we will actually get across the finish line? Yeah, so two years ago, we won the opportunity to build our space station off of what's called the forward node of the ISS. So we're building our station off of uh, the ISS. Our first element that we'll launch is in September of 24, and then we'll launch uh, three more elements to be attached to the ISS. And then we'll separate sometime toward the end of the decade when the ISS is retired. And then we'll become a free flyer and continue to add to our uh, station after that. And I mean, when the ISS is retired, what's going to take it pl its place? I mean, we just had a fascinating conversation with Adam Minter of Bloomberg Opinion, who said that perhaps we're going to see private space stations take its place. Is that your opinion as well? Uh, certainly. And, you know, our commercial station is, is mostly privately funded. We do have a contract with NASA that really um, provides insight to NASA. They want to know while we're attached to the ISS that when we turn the lights on on our side, it doesn't dim the lights on their side and, and that sort mm -hmm. of thing. And because we're going to be neighbors for a few years, we really hope that we're the logical choice for NASA to continue to use uh, us for uh, research and technology development and flying NASA astronauts. And Matt, it's interesting. It feels like most of the conversation around commercial space travel has been really focused on space tourism specifically. But I'd love to hear your perspective on whether that's too narrow of a focus, whether we should be more ambitious. Yeah, I think it's it's way too narrow. Uh, and in fact, it's only one of our six business lines. I think the one that's the most interesting is... Uh, I believe 15, 20 years from now, we're going to be surrounded by objects that we can't imagine how we live without that were manufactured in space, that were manufactured in, in the microgravity environment. And there's been a number of really interesting experiments on ISS, but there's no way for NASA to help companies really commercialize those things. And so I think we're going to see all kinds of applications and interesting things being made in manufacturing space. And, and that's going to be the real business, I think. I mean, given the supply chain issues that we're dealing on, dealing with on Earth right now, I'm curious to see what the uh, space supply chain looks like. But I mean, are any companies thinking about that, about moving their manufacturing businesses to space? Is that on anyone's radar right now? Yeah, certainly. We have a number of early customers that are interested in things. Uh, I'll give you an example. And, uh, you know, one of the advantages of microgravity is that you can... Uh, print things, 3D print things or additive manufacture things that you can't necessarily additive manufacture on earth. And some of those are, are um, you know, bioprinting of organs or, or cells. And the, the analogy I like to use is on earth, it's like you're trying to build a sandcastle with dry sand and it just doesn't work very well. But in microgravity, you can do those sort of things. And so ideas like printing perfect retinal implants um, is something that, uh, has been demonstrated, at least experimentally, and uh, is, I think, one of many examples of the kind of things that we could do in space. And so when we're talking about, you know, potentially businesses being in space, I mean, do you envision this happening on space centers, or is this something that could take place, for example, on the moon or on other planets? Yeah, certainly. I think if you, if you see how uh, civilization evolved on Earth and where cities were, were were born, um, they're born around natural resources. And so it makes sense that there's a tremendous amount of natural resources on the moon. And so I think there's gonna be lots of opportunities to build you know, space stations or, or uh, habitats on the moon to take advantage of the natural resources that are there. And so we talked about your timeline for space tourism. What's your timeline for you know, potentially businesses being in space, producing products in space? Yeah, we really think it starts when we have our first set of modules uh, uh, in space. Uh, our third module that we're flying is uh, 
completely dedicated to research and manufacturing. And so we're talking to many customers right now to start that process. And, you know, in fact, on the, on the commercial astronaut side, we're flying our first uh, crew to the ISS next week. So it's the first uh, commercial crew uh, to ever go to the ISS. And Matt, we have about 45 seconds, but I'd love to hear your thoughts on, you know, how the war in Ukraine, considering Russia's role in space, how is that impacting the timeline here? You know, so far it has not. Um, of course, the ISS is a tremendous, uh, amazing partnership of many countries, but especially the U.S. and the Russians. So it certainly has put a strain on that relationship. Um, but, you know, one of the things that, uh, that we're so excited about commercial is that this idea of uh, the overview effect, mm. where people that go to space, they come back with a profound difference on how they look at uh, the earth right. because they've seen it from space. And so we really think uh, our space station is going to be an international place where lots of people right. can come from all over the world.